Something is going to happen. Something wonderful. It just never gets old, does it? There you go. <laughs> G'day, fans, and welcome to another exciting episode, if you want to call it that, uh, of Talk Nerdy to Me. Here we are on another wonderful Wednesday night. The curfew is still in place, the lockdown still in place, but, hey, hopefully you're joining us for a bit of fun, frolics, and a nerdy talk. And as always, I have to introduce my co-hosts. We've got Michelle joining us already, which is fantastic. Uh, my lads, how are we tonight? We'll say something. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're both doing non-verbal communication. Oh, um, um, is well, we'll there you go. <laughs> Hang on, don't talk over each other. You go. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> we're here. Can we're we... good. It's Wednesday. It's what can I say? Hump day, yep. apparently. Yeah. Hump day. Yep. All right. So, um, if there's nothing else, I think we're going to move on to our first presentation, which is from the NPS. So uh, about ugly uh, action figures. Now, I don't mean action figures of us three. Because they would be pretty damp. That would be butt ugly, as they say. But uh, there's bound to be some out there that you sort of wonder. Um, surely they couldn't produce that, and in fact they have. So I'm going to pass over to MPS. So there you go, mm. sir. So everybody can think it in their heads if you want. U G L Y. You ain't got no alibi. You ugly action figures. All right. So now you can be thankful for having that song stuck in your head for the rest of the night. All right. We've got a lot to get through. So I'm going to run um, some of this fairly quick some of these you may have seen over the years some of them you may not some are not uh well let's just see what the categories are action figures that are ugly as uh what were they thinking knock off and bootlegs and oh my god okay so they're the four sort of categories that these all sort of fit into and you'll see why shortly the not so incredible hulk um, <laughs> I found his counterpart in the world that he should live in, and it's Morph. So this particular figure, I think, is perfectly set in the Morph universe, and um, that's that's all I'm going to say about that. This one is a He-Man knockoff. For the body is a ripoff from the He-Man figure, so obviously an 80s figure. The head is a knockoff from I don't know hitting too many buses with its face. I, I just I don't know where this one's from. Uh, I think it's a Mexican or Chinese bootleg. Um, again, this was meant to be Bruce or David Banner, and it looks like some sort of anime punk. Um, as for the, the cartoon character that it's meant to represent, I, I, I don't know. The only thing that's similar is the fact he's got purple pants. So they're not so amazing Spider-Man. This guy looks like he's blind and and doesn't know where he's going. Uh, the fact that it's obviously some sort of Chinese knockoff and and blue does not exist in the color palette. That <laughs> sort of has me a little bit as well. Uh, when you're talking about Spidey in his costume, you want to make sure he can see. This might be the cross-eyed Spidey version, <laughs> but I you can actually see where the paint has been really badly done. So right across the face, right across the middle section, um, and I don't know, someone someone missed it big time on the on the painting scheme there. Now we know Joe Jana, JJ was Joe Jana Abra, I can't think what his name is. Um, <laughs> Jonah, Jonah Jameson. Jameson, yeah, because there's three J's in there. Um, always too big for his boots, but apparently he's too too his clothes are too big for him. And his head is too small for everything. So, and that's a serious flat top you got sitting there too. Spider-Man came in a range of figures in the 90s. Uh, some of these were Beach Spider-Man, because, you know, everyone wants to have some fun at the beach. Safari Spider-Man, um, baseball, basketball, and soccer Spider-Man. Now, the interesting thing, if you note here, is it's obviously the same figure, but... Who puts a safari suit on top of his costume? You know, mm. that's what I want to ask. And then when you get down to soccer Spider-Man, he's he's lost his his whole suit except for the the gloves and the mask, and he's in soccer gear. So 
Yeah, a bit of a marketing what were they thinking sort of adventure, I think. Now, this is one Superman for the books. This doesn't even come close. I, it looks like his eyes popped out of his head. Um, the cape is, is semi-attached. The, the workout he's done, if this was a real person, is one for the ages. It's all upper body, no arms, no legs. So he's <laughs> completely unproportional or improportional. Now we know back in the in the sixties and seventies, Superman had a horse because uh, it was super, super the super dog Crypto. Uh, the cat was I can't remember the cat was name. Uh, the monkey was Beppo, and I can't remember the horse's name either. But apparently, Super Heroic Man, as this one is, has to ride a horse into battle. Let's forget the fact that he can fly. Okay, can the horse fly too? Uh, no, <laughs> not this one. It's got to be white. Um, wonder whatever happened to her woman. So this was a, a, a 70s figure, which apart from the fact that she should be riding the horse by the looks of it, let's ignore the fisted hand and where the position is. Because, <laughs> yeah, oh, anyway, yeah. Now, yeah. from that position, the next Wonder Woman figure, you can see what probably did happen afterwards. That. So... <laughs> The only time you ever see Wonder Woman pregnant that I'm aware of is in the story um, Kingdom Come that Alex Ross wrote years and years ago. Uh, and she and Superman hooked up and she was pregnant. Just but, think, yeah. when someone designed that, they actually thought that was actually a good idea and uh, actually market it and sell it. And it's just like, what were people thinking, seriously? <laughs> well, that's what we've got to ask. Um <laughs> So, you know, a little bit of modesty, but, you know, I, I I actually think she's like halfway through putting the costume on and she's using the lasso to get her, the rest of her clothes off the washing line or something because, quite frankly, she's missing a few bits um, of clothing there. If that was a male version, you could actually say, oh, you could do, do it up as a dude at the pub, you know, because dudes drinking their beer and they get the beer gut and yeah. all that sort of stuff. So, uh, yeah. beer gut, man. So there you go. Love it. My favourite. Crap man. Um, <laughs> much as, like, as much as I love Batman and have got nice action figures, this is not one of them. Not at all. Um, I'm not even sure where this figure is based. I think it's either, again, Mexico or China. They seem to be the two bootleg capitals of the world. Um, but the cape looks like a black piece of garbage bag that's just been sort of stuck to his head. Hey, here's a question for you. So yeah. if a company makes a bootleg figure... From one country, does another country get that figure and go, oh, this must be the official version. We'll make our own version of that. And then you end up, it's like the uh, Chinese whispers sort of scenario. And you get seven figures down the line from made in different countries around the world. And the last figure looks nothing like anything like the original one at all. You do have to wonder that. Well, we have something similar to that, which I'll get to shortly. You'll, un you'll understand why. Yep. So Crap Man has his other friend, the other Crap Man. Um, <laughs> this is more of a Batman Begins Crap Man because... It's just some sort of figure with a really bad sticker across the, the chest um, and a couple of pointy things that look like ears. Now, did you know that Crap Man was part of the Avengers? So <laughs> <laughs> apart from the fact that his suit is a whole different colour, he's got a light that protrudes from the inside of his symbol um, and he's got googly eyes. Um, now, here's the funny thing. If you have a close look at that, and I don't know if you can, there's a price tag right in the, the dead center of it, and it says twelve dollars yeah. ninety. Wow, twelve dollars ninety for a bootleg of a superhero that's in the wrong timeline, using pictures from the wrong film. <laughs> so, but it, love it. There are better ones than this, and I'm coming to them shortly. Now, this was not a bootleg. This is a legit figure. Mm -hmm. But again, why has Batman got bright orange skis? and some sort of tank on his back, okay? And this was my issue with a lot of the figures that came out when they started releasing Batman after the 89 film. They just released Batman with anything, and this is an animated series Batman um, from about 95 because I can tell by the symbol and the fact that you've got different logo at the top um, on the packaging. But they just released Batman with anything, um, and, and that really annoyed me. <laughs> eh? And purple boots. And purple boots, yeah. 
There you go. The boots get better on some of the others. You get ready for this one soon. Now, these came out in the late 80s, early 90s, and they were a certain company made these over in China, and there was a whole stack of them, but mainly the DC sort of characters. Now, Batman wasn't too bad, too bad a figure, uh, except for the fact that he's got a different colour scheme altogether, which I think is based... They're trying to base this one what looked like on the 66 movie poster because that was done with a red costume at one point. But here are the others that came through. And Batman in the black with his silver go-go boots, that's fine. I can, I can get down with that. Um, but wide-eyed Robin on the other side, sort mm. of has you um, wondering what's... What's got his eyes so wide when that should be reversed and a little white dot for his eye and the rest should be black mask? I just thought of something. Maybe they're intended to be play uh, toys for the dog so you know, the dog can chew on them and all the rest of it. So uh, <laughs> it might work that way. And that Batman figure on the left, I've actually got that one. So uh, there you go. Yeah, you I, I have a couple of those. The Superman, the actual logo, the S is missing. So uh, yeah, yeah, that was actually brave. Getting around the copyright. Well, if you have a look at the packaging on the Batman one, on the black one, the, the S and the Bat are both wiped out, but on the other side, they're, they're on there. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I had funny. a couple of those. I had one of the Robin, I think, at that stage. Um, the other yeah. Batman I had, which was, was this one. But the Robin, again, looks really weird, you know, and I'm trying to think of what he actually... Because that's not a small character. You know, Robin's mm. meant to be a teen wonder, and that looks like... Um, I don't know, but his head's bigger than Batman, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't think they care about the scale so much if the quality of the product is so bad to start with. So uh, <laughs> yes. Um, and again, they've 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 coloured out the logo, so you can't actually see who they are. But these also had Spider Man and a few others, but uh, mostly the DC sort of guys. Another official figure from the Dark Knight. Uh, series back in the 90s they just went crazy they actually started using um, ideas from this the book series Legends of the Dark Knight and some of the ideas were just really out there including this one which is neural claw Batman you know I just why just why he's mm. never sort of needed to look like that in the comics there's no character that's that he needs to fight in that sort of suit. So why? It it almost looks like he's trying to do the metal thing, you know, sort of, you know, hey, I'm metal. <laughs> <laughs> now, team-ups. When you think of team-ups, I think of the Avengers, I think of Justice League. But how's this for, and read the packaging, sense of right all allegiance with <laughs> Power Ranger, the green Power Ranger, because he's apparently the cool one, Superman, Batman, Spider-Man and Shrek. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I was unaware of Shrek's superpowers. Uh, can, if anyone can sort of help maybe, me out on that, that would be great. Maybe it's a really bad green goblin. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's so bad it looks like Shrek. Unless it's the Incredible Hulk, in which case he's wearing clothes and that's thrown me completely. Um but these started off in the 90s. They're all in your $2 shops, your cheap shops. Um, and they're all over the place. And there's a whole stack of them. But again, team-ups, Power Rangers. Did you know there was a green Power Ranger? <laughs> oh, yes, you did. did you know there were several green Power Rangers that all look the same? <laughs> Neither did I. You've been cloned. Oh, i got to say that this is one for the books where if you had a kid that was hell-bent on destroying the figures and cried every time it got broke, you'd buy one or two of these packets, you'd give them just the one out of it, and when that was destroyed, you'd just swap it out with a new one, and you wouldn't notice any difference. Classic. The fact that Batman's got a green suit throws me completely, and a red cape. Um, I can't even come up with a character <laughs> that's got... <laughs> you, Aaron's comment's very funny. Yes, I do um, like that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit wrong, but everything yeah. else is wrong so far. So, yeah, continue. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I got no idea. I think this is just someone's <laughs> gone, we've got a lot of green plastic to use and we've got some red capes and let's just get rid of them all. Um, yeah. I don't know. Here's a question from Michelle. Like, 
where where do you find all these? The question is, do you want to find all these? There's probably someone who's bought all these things and it's the pride of their life. They're worth not usually they're worth millions in the future, but uh, in this case, uh, definitely not. I think the question should have come from the Joker. Where do you get all these wonderful toys? Uh, yes, because... exactly right. <laughs> um, actually, Michelle, a lot of these have been out in market for years yeah. uh, and over the years. Um, like these ones, these are all new. Did you know that Batman from Batman Begins was in Avengers Infinity War and that Superman was in Age of Ultron, the Avengers yeah. 2 Age of Ultron film? I didn't know that. They must have been sneaky Easter eggs, you know, because I never saw them in those films. Oh, I know why I didn't see Batman, because it was all shot during the day and Batman comes out only at night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. Now, this could be just super ninjas. However, they look like very fit turtles without shells. Mm. So... Um, I think this is meant to be the Ninja Turtle ripoff, but it's hard to tell. However, I do have more Ninja Turtles. That, well, they kind of look like Ninja Turtles, but I don't know what they actually are because there's no shell, and um, I don't know what they are. Well, However, probably, there probably used to be there probably used to be like people, and they've just changed the heads, but didn't even bother with the shell. Yeah. Uh, look for those two. All they've done. For those ones, all they've done is painted them green and tried to make them look like Ninja Turtles. That's, that's all they've done. Um, that one, it's obviously some sort of, well, it looks like a mech robot, but it's got three fingers and two toes, so that's turtle related. So someone had to build that. Um, but these ones, these ones look like like they're scared, witless and stupid, but are carrying portable letter boxes. So as you do. As you do. Um, in actual fact, I think these are legit figures for memory that could shoot out like mini pizzas or something like that um, because the turtles figures just got ridiculous after a long time. But they're tortoises, not turtles. So this is not a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. This is a new style ninja tortoise and it really is a new style. If you <laughs> want to suggest it's a new style, it certainly is. He looks you happy. You've got to say the line, I love being a tortoise. <laughs> doesn't work, does it? <laughs> he's obviously not turned around and said, and only pay half price for late pizza because yeah. I don't think he's missed out on a pizza ever. It's never full price for late pizza, thank I'm you very much. Full price. Well, I don't have to say the line, right? It's not the right turtle. So. True. <laughs> and this one. This one is actually meant to be a proper figure. Uh, however, from what I read, the guy lost, or the kid lost the head, and so the guy, the father, just drew on the face. But I thought, imagine this. This could almost be a knockoff, and you wouldn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal ninja powers. Itty bitty little head. So yes. you can sort of have a bit of fun with that one. Actually, I, I don't mind that one. That's kind of cute. Yep. Robocrap. He was the <laughs> one who came... Now, the funny part is if you have a look at the card, yeah. uh, it's actually called Robert Cop 2, <laughs> and I'll be back. So I don't know, <laughs> I don't know um, who got their lines slightly, slightly confused, uh, but that looks like an action figure that's been thrown around the backyard for about 10 years, stuck in a bag and given to a kid. Part machine. Was it uh, part cop or Robert? <laughs> <laughs> yes, all <Man>. Robert. <laughs> um, so I changed it to Robert crap. Um, yeah, very good. No offense to anyone called Robert, but just for the figure's purpose. Now, Robert crap came back with Guy uh, as an action figure called. Remember when that when Robocop shot that dude in the dick? Well, this is the figure is that dude who was shot in the dick um, action figure. Yeah. <laughs> if you can see at the groin area, there's a red patch. Um, oh, I'm not going to explain any further as to what that might be. Yeah, I'll leave that to your imaginations. <laughs> <laughs> I think we put that up. Uh, that should be there. good to have. <laughs> Oh, it, was, it was that time of the month, was it? Well, <laughs> that, I, wasn't gonna, that. I wasn't going there, but I just let you 
come up with your own thoughts. I can't edit that. Now, He Man, you know, the sad part is I couldn't come up with anything funny about to say about He Man, and I don't have to um, because even He Man came out with um, bootlegs. Now, in 2002, when the new figures came out, uh, which looked very similar to these, um, these came out about six months later. The one on the right, the larger figure, is actually the bootleg, the proper bootleg, because it's actually 10% bigger. So someone's gone to the trouble of making it 10% bigger and then adding bits and pieces to it. Um. <laughs> Go on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad, 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 bad man, Aaron. What can I say? Which is a family show for... <laughs> um, but the the character on the left is actually another knockoff because it's got the wrong pieces to it. So they're both actually bootlegs, but not too bad a figure. Now, some bootlegs are actually quite good, and there is a series which I'll come to shortly, which I thought was fantastic at the time and still do. And if you can find them, they're now worth a lot of money. Uh, but these ones are actually not bad. And I had a, a couple of these but got rid of them because they were... They got worse as, as the characters came up, came out. Um, this is one I'd never seen before until I was doing some research, and it's not hey man, it's Universe Prince. Uh, I think it's a Japanese knockoff of some sort. Um, but if you just have a look at the figure, it actually looks like someone's just stuck a blow-up doll in a box. Um, and I can't really say much more because I've got no, no other info on this, but that would certainly be a, a different one to sort of find. Now, for those who want to change the sexes of their characters, ooh, a bit of Lady Skeletor, hello. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what to say about this apart from it should be in the collection. It really she should be. Yeah. She, well, she's got some sort of power um, and a wickedly weird laugh too. Um, yeah, I think someone's taken a, a Lady death figure and just put a, a skeletal head on it so not bad but certainly a little bit different and if you have a look at the sword that's between its legs <laughs> that was a tricky line to say uh it's actually clear and glittery and i will uh move on from there on. yes heroes de la galaxia now it's not for the fact that it looks like a a, a weird mexican wrestler um <laughs> but have a look at the packaging it's actually on an angle, which. <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm not sure why the packaging is so weird. Why it couldn't just be some sort of straight box? But this is obviously another one of those He-Man sort of um, ripoffs from the day. Now, I was just very quickly going to say, I'm glad that Susie can't spell correctly because there should be a W in there somewhere. But luckily, we're not going to put that in. So uh, we'll just move yeah. on along, shall we? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, these were the actual knockoffs uh, back in the in the day of the He-Man figures, and they came out uh, about half the price of what the actual He-Man figures were. The Galaxy Warriors set, there was a stack of these, and these are now worth quite a bit if you're looking on them, looking for them on eBay. There's a whole stack of these. There's, I think there's about 12 figures or whatever the case is. Virtually, they're the same body. The only difference is the the um, the head and the armor that they're sort of wearing, but everything else is pretty much the same, just different colors. Um, and now I think they're looking at integrating some of these into the He-Man universe. Um, now, we change from one sci-fi series to another. It looks like Seven's Arc Seven, mm -hmm. but it's not. It's meant to be R2-D2. However, he's got a weird third leg and two bolts hanging out the side of his head. Um, <laughs> Considering some of the stuff we've seen tonight already, saying he's got a weird third leg sort of just fits in quite nicely, doesn't it? Really? <laughs> it does. Um, now, we're talking about team-ups and universal team. Now, I when I saw this first, if you have a look at the very centre figure, I thought this was... Come on, guys, you should know. Spaceballs. Spaceballs. I thought it was a Spaceballs yeah. set. But uh, alas, no... It's meant to be old Darth in his silver and black suit and stormtroopers with capes and uh, white stormtroopers who was too cool that they got to wear sunglasses. <laughs> yeah, dark helmet exactly in the middle. Yep. Yeah. 
Uh, more of the same sort of figures, just three different helmets, uh, the FET looking helmet, the Vader and the Stormtrooper. Um, and why they've got a half assed Vader mask, I don't know. Mm. Now, remember when, when episode one came out and all the bootlegs did? Well, this is this looks like crap yourself, Darth Maul, because he looks terrified. He looks more afraid of you than you are of him. So he was the long line of the, the Chinese knockoffs, and there was a whole bunch of these. This is a wide-eyed, weird-looking... Um, oh, what's his name? Krennic, thank you. Um, who obviously doesn't... The, the curtains don't match the drapes, basically. You know, the eyebrows are quite dark, but the hair is quite light, so I'll let you figure out what's going on there. Then there's totally weird-looking Vader, who looks like he's been in the microwave for a couple of minutes and, and come out rather crispy and a little soft around the edges. Um, again, another one of these these really, really cheap knockoffs. Oh, probably a couple of bucks in the $2 stores. Um, now... This is how you know to say ATST and ATAT -AT because it's not at at, otherwise it'd be Star Wars. It's STBR Wars. So you know where that comes from? If you have the uh, font uh, on your computer, Star Jedi, if you write all in uppercase, sometimes some of the letters actually change around. I don't know why. You have to do it all in lowercase. And it wouldn't surprise me if that's what they've done there. So, uh, but you are right. It's a pretty obvious mistake, isn't it? <laughs> I think it's a clear spelling mistake. Um, and I. I and I say that because I'm ignoring Claire's suggestion before that I spelled alibi wrong. And yeah, you, you are right. I probably did, but no one else noticed. So I'm going to keep moving. Um, I noticed, but I had more important things to worry about. So, but yeah. anyway, well, Claire does all my editing. Oh, she used yep. to. She doesn't anymore. So, um, just stuck yep. my language. Um, so this little green dude with a well, what looks like a magical wand rather than a, a lightsaber, looks very young uh, in its appearance. So it looks maybe it's. It's Yoda's younger sibling, or so maybe it's the child when it gets older. I don't know. Good Could point. Be Shrek. <laughs> oh yeah, kid Shrek. Um, <laughs> now these are just terrible. These are obviously been made from the original figures, uh, mm -hmm. except the Gamorrean guard because he's about three foot two short, um, and someone's obviously made the molds over in the in China ripped them off and painted them badly. Uh, it looks like Bib Fortuna is actually going out for a dinner date um, because that blue dress is is all the way down. It doesn't look like robes. It just looks like a dress. So um, I don't even know that where these came from, but these are absolutely terrible. Now, this is a legit figure, and Dags has more information on this one. Yeah, it's a bit of a funny story, this. So... Uh... When they produced the the Princess Leia in this series, uh, a lot of people were very very um, upset about how uh, she was portrayed. I mean, all muscly and butch and all the rest of it, completely unrelated to how the actress actually really really looked. And there was actually a bit of talk at the time saying that they should um, remold the figure and re-release it. Uh, and it was actually Steve Sansweet, I think it was, who's the biggest world's biggest Star Wars collector, actually suggested they should not do that because if they do that, then this figure, which is completely but ugly and insulting to uh, Carrie Fisher, would become an ultra rare collectible. So I think in the end, they just kept producing them as they were. So um, yeah, how this got past anybody uh, in terms of uh, being released, and it's an official uh, figure, as MPS mentioned, is is beyond me. But uh, yeah, it's not at all uh, flattering by any stretch. Yeah. Well, the power of the Force figures all look like they were on some sort of steroids because Luke looks like he's beefcake and a half. You know? Vader looks like he's been not... It's like David Prowse put on a suit that's two sizes too small. Um, these were just... I thought they were weird when they came out. Like, it looked... It was different. It was different to what we were used to, but they looked wrong, you know, and the fact that they were so butchered, beefcaked. Yeah, I think they were trying to aim for a, probably a, a male market uh, of young boys, effectively saying, "Oh, this is how the, this is you too could look like Han Solo and look so old if you're all beefed up." But of course, you shouldn't, shouldn't have done that with Princess Leia. So I don't know if that was the mindset at the time, but uh, either way, um, yeah, not good. Yeah. Uh, now these are the figures I was talking about, which I think were almost as good, and I would have loved to have seen more of these, but not as unofficial knockoffs. The Galaxy Empire figure range that came out were awesome you know they were twice the size of a normal figure so that, that was six inches not three and three quarter um and they were fairly accurate you know the stormtroopers got blue gloves you know, that's not a big deal the weapons were all wrong that's fine 
Um, but you had a really good um, <laughs> FET and a really good Vader and a really good Stormtrooper that if you wanted to paint up and, and make them look legit, you could. The thing is, look at Chewie, because that is officially Chewie, and that's Chewie from one of the novelizations. I can't remember which one it is, where he plays a bounty hunter. Oh, that's uh, Shadows of the Empire. Shadows of the Empire, thank you. Um, and I think there was a Luke and one other figure. Um, but these were these were great at a couple of bucks each, and uh, my my Boba Fett is somewhere around the house, which I want to paint up to be uh, the proper colours. But yeah, I like these, and I wish that someone had to release these officially because they would have been awesome to have. One of the things that gives away the fact that these are cheap knockoffs. If you turn the back over, the black is just brown cardboard. There's no painting yeah. on the back. So yeah, yeah. I like that comment from Ange about the Princess Leia thing. She will break you. <laughs> Yeah. Well, as, as we as we come up to episode one cards that were or figures that were repoed, um, let me go through and, and give you the names of these characters that they, they thought they were. So top left hand corner uh, is Mace Window. <laughs> then you've got Toby One in the middle. <laughs> and of his rapper name, the Emperor Daft Sirius. <laughs> Um, the bottom left hand is Little Girl, which is meant to be Anakin. So someone got that wrong in China. Um, middle centre, uh, Toby One's master was Fly Gone Jin. <laughs> Pretty fly. <laughs> Pretty fly he was. And he was killed by Dennis. So... <laughs> <laughs> There's more. Dennis the Menace. We get to the Queen. That's considered correct. Uh, and before uh, most people knew who this character was, this is glorious Star Lord, uh, not the um, Gal Guardians of the Galaxy Star Lord. Um, uh, oh, I can't think of his name. Who was the head Gungan again? Boss Ness. Boss Ness. Sorry. Yes, he was Upright Slug, <laughs> another rapper. Uh, <laughs> then you have Cone Head down the bottom. Um, and this this unit was R two three PO, so <laughs> and and Watto, uh, his name was Watt. Um, <laughs> it's not absolutely perfect too. Watt W H A T. Uh, so they were the knockoffs of Episode One figures, and I've got to say, there was a lot of them. Oh, golly. <laughs> now these were my two favourites. These were customs, obviously the Aunt Beru and Uncle Owen, the charred remains. Um, yep. That was always funny. <laughs> now, Space Wars 2, we continue. Now, this, I, I need someone to clarify this. Maybe, Aaron, you can if you're listening to what I'm about to say. I've never seen these before, and these were meant to be a Comic-Con release in 2016. And i got to say, I don't like them. Their heads look wrong, you know. So, um, yeah, big bang figures that look absolutely wrong. Pennies of research. Yeah, then we get to the Star Trek ones. And even though these are legit figures, they look wrong to me. They've always looked wrong. The, um, it looks like someone's cartoon made them all into cartoons and it just looks wrong, which is probably why they're not selling. So anyone who's still got these in packets, I've seen these at collector's fairs, people are asking for top dollar and they're just not selling at all. Yeah. Now we've got some miscellaneous melted plastic. This is meant to be Tom Cruise from uh, Mission Impossible. Does it look the same? No. It looks like a crash test dummy with that head. Yeah. Uh, Kermit the Hand. Um, I yeah. I would like one of these figures. Maybe we'll get one for Dave. Um, Lara Croft Tomb Raider, where I think she's got like a sleeping bag stuck between her legs and a couple of marbles. I think that's how they... And made the body. I'll let you figure out why I'm talking about the marbles. My Tomb Raider figures are much better than that, and I've got to say this was one of those weird ones. Um, Adventure Man, who on the picture on the picture looks like the dude from the our intro that says nerds at the end of it, um, <laughs> but it, I think it's meant to be Rambo. Uh, Obama as a Jedi. This I, <laughs> I thought was quite interesting. So. <laughs> And it's a legit packet in a legit store with a legit price. Yeah. Now, I didn't know they did Buffy's, Buffy figures where they did the knockoff called the Power Slayer, but they did. And again, I think marbles were used for certain body parts because they're 
round and just right there. Um, I do like the artwork of the actual cartoon figure, but she's got a what looks like a flamethrower, and I don't know what the other tool is that she's using. The other the, isn't the other tool Xander? <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> um, spook chasers. Where do you think they got the idea for these guys? <laughs> <laughs> and what that that brown weird coloured thing is in the other packet, I don't know, but it, I think it's meant to be a ghost, but I, I can't be exact for sure. Now, these are legit figures, and I don't know why they've done them for the Sesame Street characters, but basically you show the skull and intestines of a puppet, which, when you think about it, is totally wrong because there should be just a hand. Um, but I find these completely weird. They've done superhero ones and a few others. I just find them weird. I don't know why they do it. Mm -hmm. Then there's a legit um, Fantastic Four, Mr. Fantastic, with 42 points of articulation. Now, <laughs> not even a human has 42 points of articulation. The, the long extra blue parts are to make him expand and do stuff, and his neck just looks really weird. He should be maybe called Giraffe Man there. Yeah, there's a few comments you can make about that. <laughs> yeah, even Harry Potter cops it. So, <laughs> uh, I don't have words for this one because I don't know what they're trying to achieve. <laughs> He's like the X-Men, the beast. Who's <laughs> <laughs> riding a broom. Yeah, okay. Uh, now, these came out back when I was a kid, so back in the late 70s, early 80s. And I love them, except for a couple of problems. Uh, yes, they're parachute figures. Batman needs a parachute, yes. But does Superman need a parachute? I don't <laughs> know. Um, again, Planet of the Apes had them. Uh, and Spock. I don't know if Spock needs a parachute, really. Um, and that was the list of, of most of them that came out with uh, parachutes. Uh, and finally, one for Jeffro. These are actually knockoffs, believe it or not. Oh. I didn't think they were. But I think cross-eyed Godzilla on the right is a dead giveaway. Uh, but the others actually look quite legit. So it's sort of strange to sort of see that the knockoff is actually quite good. Um, and the one that gives it away here is multicolored Godzilla. So I don't know about that. And I think that is it. Far out. How good is that? Well done, MPS. That's an excellent uh, presentation, old son. But it doesn't end there because there's a couple of pictures that we want to add in. Um, talk about inappropriate action figures. Mint in packet. You know you want to buy them. Uh, you kind of got to do this. Uh, there we go, guys. Jeffro, you can present these if you want. Well, what can I say? That uh, if you need to suck and get a little bit of a buzz out of it, well, this is the drink container for you. So... Um, I believe it doesn't squirt too hard, but um, as I said, uh, if you're thirsty and you want a bit of a bit of a buzz, that's the drink for you. And next to that, we have Spider-Man shooting his web load. Um, so um, I don't know how far he can, he can shoot. It just depends on how much he shakes up the uh, the gun and then sort of shoots it off. So uh, lots lots of fun there for the kids. And lastly, that's actually, um, I don't know, it's, it's supposed to be a pillow. <laughs> so if you're sad and lonely and, you, and you've got your little man of steel out, then maybe your little man of steel can come up <laughs> to the Superman pillow. So uh, leave the packet. Hang on, hang on, Michelle. Maybe Getting suffer. past it again. Maybe These suffer. are actually legitimate products, so we're just presenting them as part of the presentation, all right? That's Superman <laughs> and all his glory hole. <laughs> oh. oh, my God. So there you go. So with millions in the future, what can I say? Absolutely fantastic. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yes, excellent work there, guys. What can I say? Uh, there is one I will chuck in, which is a legitimate one, uh, and I'll do this pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, you are talking about Star Wars action figures earlier. They made millions and millions of the damn things, as you well know. Uh, the most rarest and hardest to get action figure in the entire world, Star Wars-wise, isn't a, like a violent cape Jawa. It isn't like a blue snaggle tooth uh, or anything like that. It's actually a character from the droids cartoons called... Oh, hang on, I'll just, there we go, Blix. Right? Now, not only is that the uh, but ugly action figure, 
but it's actually the rarest in the world because it was only manufactured in Brazil. And as far as the world is concerned, they think there's only 12 of these uh, in existence in the US. So uh, in from the 1990s, because the show got cancelled and they just produced them in Brazil. So how ironic is it that the rarest action figure in the entire Star Wars lineup is this guy? So uh, there you go. And apparently they gave him a second name, Vlix on card. And that's actually a joke of the fact that he's worth a lot of money on the card. So uh, there you go. So if you find one of those uh, uh, in your travels, you could probably sell a kidney and uh, buy a house with it. So uh, there you go. How good is that? Oh, goodness gracious me. Very, very, very good stuff. Well done there. So I think we should uh, wrap this up. Any final words from my lads? Don't try and remake us. We're classics. <laughs> That would be yeah, imagine that a remake of Talk Nudie to me with three other dudes, it's just just like uh, and more successful than we are, too. So there you go. See, see Jeffro's the classic, and I'm I'm the um the bootleg. So you know, we talk action figures. <laughs> very, very, very good. So there you go. All right, so that's us for for tonight. Make sure you enjoy the rest of your week. So join us next week for a bit of flash Gordon, a bit of and a bit of Snyder action, and uh we'll leave it at that. So in the interim, make sure you all <gasps> Stay nerdy. Okay. Stay nerdy. Okay. Er, bye. See ya. See ya.